wow my voice this is the first time i've spoken today i'm looking awfully fresh for someone that did not sleep last night honestly do you ever have it where you get into bed and you're like sat in bed you're all snuggly you've got that warm cozy feeling that's like mm, sleepy and then your head hits the pillow and your heart starts racing you're like you couldn't have done this like two hours ago so I ended up putting on like a five hour Gilmore Guys podcast just so I had like voices in the room and it, it did help in the end. So I did wake up multiple times and the podcast was still playing. But yeah, I think I basically just mostly slept for on and off for the duration of the podcast. So I've had about five hours sleep, which actually not too bad. But yeah, I was expecting to look bad this morning, but actually skin is dewy. I'm happy. Anyway, this morning we are going to get started by testing out something new. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I think I may have effed up on the colour. It's like, mm, I don't know. I'm going to have to give it a go. <laughs> it's the only way to find out. I haven't really read up much on this, so I'm interested to see like the coverage, how it blends. Backstory, if you aren't familiar with my general makeup routine. This is a good shade, yeah. Okay, shade 6, neutral. Well done me. Finally learnt to match myself to foundations online. It's easy with Charlotte Tilbury. She basically does the same across, I would say, all of the foundation ranges. As someone that's a big magic foundation fan, I'm interested to see how this compares. I'm expecting like dewier and like a maybe slightly lighter version of the magic foundation. The magic foundation, by the way, if you haven't tried it, is incredible. It's my like go-to every day, but also one layer for every day, two layers for like events makeup because it just builds so so well like you have fully flawless skin if you do two layers it's just incredible and the finish of it is beautiful it's like this gorgeous flawless like satiny finish whereas her airbrush flawless foundation i feel like is more glowy highlighty i actually haven't used that in a long time i need to give that a go when i go out next but yeah this is kind of coming off like a light magic foundation with dewiness but like if i feel like it's more coverage than the What's it? The Wonder Youth Foundation, which is like sheer glowy summeriness, which I also used recently and loved. Like basically, I just don't think she's produced a bad foundation. Okay, that blended really well. Let me zoom you in. Okay, so you can see I've got like, God, I'm so, I'm so dewy that you can't fully see the skin. I have scarring here, which has been covered fairly well. It's quite dark, so that is that's pretty good to be honest for one layer of foundation. And even normally magic foundation wouldn't completely cover that. I need concealer as well. So the coverage on this I would say is good, but it just looks like very dewy skin. If you don't like a dewy foundation, if you've got oilier skin, this probably won't be the one for you. I'm also going to give the rose ink concealer a try today. I've got the shade LX060. Love the packaging. I can't wait to see like what they bring out next in this range because there's obviously at the moment a bit of skincare and then there's concealer and like a multi-use blush. See how we go. I'm a big fan, big, big fan of the Fenty Pro Filter Concealer. So I'm excited to see how this works in comparison. It's not as quick to blend in as Pro Filter. It doesn't have as much coverage either, but it looks, it, I think this is like a nice natural concealer i'd say it's got less coverage than the fenty pro filter but this would be if you don't have particularly dark scarring like me this would be a nice everyday concealer so if you have dry skin though i don't really feel like it's giving me dewy vibes so it might be one to steer clear of i'm just also not sure on the finish of this i like it i don't know why the dough foot on it has to be so enormous like who uses that much concealer all at once but now i do definitely understand why all the girls on instagram with the good skin love that concealer my eyeshadow today i'm going to use a charlotte tilbury jewel pot this is in the shade walk no shame and it looks absolutely gorgeous i'm just taking that onto an hourglass brush and then i'm just going to do the rest of my makeup as usual so i'm going to speed this bit up otherwise we will be here all day
Okay, I have just finished filming an outfits video and this is the current state of my living room. It goes out into the hallway too. I've actually just finished reheating my lunch, so I'm gonna have that now. I'm so hungry. And then I think I'm gonna go out for a walk because the weather's got really nice outside and I'm scared if I say that too loud, it will go away. This is yesterday night's creamy pasta with bean chicken and peppers and oh my God, it was so good. My battery is dying and I look like an egg, but I thought you would all really appreciate knowing that I made it outside. Not that you can tell. Better. Okay. See? Outside. Pretty. Do you know what? I'm forever trying to work out if a darker nude lip suits me. What do we think? I would love to hear your thoughts because I honestly don't know. So it is Friday. I'm currently waiting for my baked oats, which is something that I saw on the internet and I am hungry. So I wanted to try to come out of the oven. So I thought I would catch up with you quickly because I realized that I really haven't vlogged that much this week. I stupidly started the vlog forgetting that I didn't really forget. I just didn't really think it through. I had a funeral on Wednesday, so that would not be a vlogging day. And then yesterday, Thursday, I just had like a lot of catching up to do work-wise. I looked a mess, so I just had to like zhuzh. Today is a very chilled day. There is no one in the house. Ryan is in the studio in London and Lauren is working from home, so I am left to my own devices. Probably be a really boring day of cleaning and stuff, but I do need to pop out. But yeah, we're just gonna hang together. It's gonna be nice. Whoa, it smells so good. Oh, okay. Now, someone, I saw on Instagram, put a bit of chocolate in the middle, so I'm gonna do that. Do I go with Bounty or Cadbury? Oh, so many choices. If you cannot have dairy, you need to get very acquainted with this brand because they're incredible. These are like Rolos, they're so good. I mean, look at that. I'll try and put the rough recipe for what I did in the info box for you guys, but oh my God. Can't wait to eat this, I'm so hungry. Oh, real moment of truth. Oh my God, it's so good. Oh my God, this is what the people on TikTok were talking about, wow. So I'm just popping out quickly to get some food for dinner. I've thrown on this little outfit. It's a very cozy little number. This is my Zara, what would you call this? It's like got a little waterfall lapel style thing and then it's like a tie waist. I absolutely love this coat. It's probably one of my best, best high street purchases. I've managed to stay in pretty good condition as well for the fact that it is obviously a very light color. I've then just got my Varley leggings on underneath my pretty little thing black body and then i've just got some h&m socks and my Ugg ultra minis none of this goes particularly like those socks i don't know what and they're my last pair of socks i just did a wash last night it's just a really nice comfy little one to throw on whilst i go out and get some dinner i also changed my lip color i popped on pure hollywood by anastasia beverly hills this is one of their liquid lips and yeah it's just it worked really nicely with what i already had on underneath but it's just like lifted the color slightly and it's also matte so it's just gonna last me the rest of the afternoon now which is great also going to pop on these these are my new glasses some of you if you missed the christmas videos you may not have seen these but oh my god look at the top of them i forgot to show this when i got them in the vlog just before christmas but they have chanel like written across the top which i just think is so cool but yeah they're my little 
Chanel vision glasses. Like whenever I put them on and I'm talking to the camera, my eyes go so weird. Oh yeah, and also this bag. I forgot to show you guys, my new rings arrived. Sorry for my dry little hands, but I got these from Local Eclectic. They're so cute. So I've got this like eternity style band on this hand and then I've got these two on my right. They're so pretty. They're real gold as well, which I'm so happy about. I've decided to start just spending a little bit more on some of my jewelry like things like this where i would stack it and wear it like every single day i'm just gonna invest okay i'm back i have secured the chicken wings and i thought i would show you the ones that i've picked in case any of you find this helpful because i know a few of you have found the plant-based recommendations whether you're dairy free or whatever really useful so i thought i would tell you about these ones i really like that they are very spicy like very very spicy i go through at least two glasses of water whilst having these maybe i'm just being a wimp but they do have three chilies on them so yeah i can't wait to have those and then this is for me and ryan so you have to make sure you feed him i've got buffalo cauliflower wings they look really yummy actually and I'm not a big fan of cauliflower. And then just in case he gets home and it's like, I didn't want anything buffalo-y. Spicy goujons, we can eat them another day if not. And then I have two dinners. Oh, and I've got some hot sauces. Are these hot sauces? Is that what you call them? Like some sriracha mayo things basically as well. And then I got an actual hot sauce. I didn't know which one to get. I'm not very good with hot sauces. I really should have left this to Ryan, but he is not here. So I just picked up this one. And then, a good old bar of Cadbury's. But yeah, I'm going to sit and do some editing now. Wild Friday afternoon. I've just done a few chores. I'm going to do some editing, do some more chores. And that is the cycle of my life at the moment. So it's very chilly this afternoon. So over my body, I've just popped on this knit from Misguided. I love this knit. It's so nice. I really love the way it hangs. It's really gorgeous. And the sleeves are really cute as well. Just nice and like slouchy, oversized. It's my favorite black knit at the moment. This is what I have been looking for for a really long time. my bag have an orthodontist appointment this morning so i'm going to have my eight week checkup on my invisalign i've only got eight weeks of trays so it could be that this is the end of it today but i have a hunch it's not going to be i feel like the two teeth we've been moving could come forward slightly just to make it perfect i'm gonna see what he says nick my dentist is like He's the pro, so I, I don't really know what I'm talking about. So it's gonna be nice to get those bits off my to-do list today and then I'm meeting a friend for a coffee. But hopefully I'll get the chance to sit down with you. We can have a cup of tea, have a catch-up. I feel like a catch-up is long, long overdue and I can finally kind of tell you what is going on a little bit at the moment, which is good. This is the bag I'm taking out today. I had a rumor these might be making a comeback this year. Like the 2000s trend is really like still lurking around annoyingly and these were very 2000s. So if these could make a comeback, that would be amazing because I love this bag and it will make me really smug if it comes back around and I'll be so glad that I never ever sold it. Not that I will sell it because I really love it. I've got lipstick I need to put in there, gloves, umbrella, phone, phone needs charging very quickly. I'm gonna take my book because I'm always waiting for ages in the dentist. So you're coming with me. Not the most practical book to be taking with me, I'm well aware. Today's outfit, we have my new Zara coat, which I just 
love it's got a real structured shoulder it's long but it's not too long on me like i don't feel like it swamps me at all it just hits at that perfect length this makes me look like on camera i look like i'm probably the same height as regular people and i love that i hate when coats really like make it obvious that i am shorter than average got a top shop t-shirt on it's like a v-neck got that on underneath and then i'm probably going to put my top shop black sweater on as well but i just need those layers in case that sweater becomes a bit too much because it's been weirdly like warm recently when i say warm just not absolutely freezing so i'm finding that i'm just feeling a little bit too warm sometimes when i'm walking around i've then got some h&m leggings on my fendi biker boots and then just my normal everyday jewelry which i will link in the info box and then my lip color is vive muse modern matte lipstick in pinch which is such a pretty color yeah anyway that is me that's my outfit ready to go guys it stopped raining for me yeah i knew as soon as i put my umbrella in my bag i was like it stopped raining now and it has but that's okay I was really stupid today. I put my phone onto charge because I was like, I'm meeting my friend after my dentist appointment. I don't want it to run out so that I then can't contact her. My mum came to pick Nala up and then I needed to leave like the second, like timings were really tight. So I needed to leave straight away. So I left and I left my phone on charge. And what do you do when you're meant to be like meeting people and you don't have a phone? So fortunately my dentist, like the receptionist was so nice. Like the service in that place is above and beyond, but they actually messaged my friend for me and told her that my appointment was running late which was amazing and I still got to see my friend and I actually had a phone free morning and early afternoon which was actually really peaceful but it does mean that I got nothing done on the go so I now have so much to do this evening but it's fine so yeah I'm back I made a little pit stop as you probably would have seen at Space NK just picked up a couple of bits which I'll show you in a second I make myself a drink and like have a little sit down with you guys I think that'll be really nice but anyway I am going to get my coat off get comfy get something to drink I'll sit down with you we can chat also welcome back to the room of doom and a big thank you to everyone that's bought something off my depop so far i'm really slow at getting the stuff on there but i'm just doing like a few drops a night feels good feels very organized also good old diy rye has fixed my drawers i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this the sun's just gone <laughs> so slow we've gone into the darkest room in the house and the sun's gone but the other one where I has fixed the drawer, which I'm really happy with. Right, guys, I've really fucked up because I have a call literally in the next 10 minutes. I'm not having a good day. Today. Also, if you hear rustling, my friend Nay is here packing up your Depop orders, which will be with you. Well, they will have been with you already by the time you see this video. But I thought I'd quickly show you in the 10 minutes that I have what I got from Space and K. So I got two of the living proof what's this called perfect hair day dry shampoo this is the best dry shampoo i alternate between this and the Karastas dry shampoo but this one this one is the best there's a lot of spray it can go quite gray but i deal with it because this is the best feeling like it still has that grittiness to it but it's like it's like a nice grittiness that doesn't feel too drying it gives the most volume it's incredible and it smells so good please excuse <laughs> we're gonna look a bit ropey for a few minutes it's always really good as well if you've just curled your hair and it's looking really really perfect i just run it over the whole of my hair just really really lightly and it just gives like some texture to it it's incredible so i've got two of those and then i've got ryan his favorite cleanser this is the keels facial fuel gel cleanser for men because they need their own special man packaging but yeah he loves it he absolutely loves it and then i've got a sunday riley ufo facial oil which is my favorite face oil that's a really oh my call i'm sorry my call so yeah i've got the facial oil it does a really good job at decongesting my skin i have to go now i'm so sorry <laughs>
too long at my desk and now it is basically dark. But to recap on what I was saying, love this makes my skin really non-congested. I put it on every morning, but sometimes if I take my makeup off early enough in the evening, I put that on first and then I'll wash my face again later after I've like eaten dinner because you get a bit messy when you eat dinner sometimes. Or I do, anyway. And um, I let it kind of like do the good work whilst I'm kind of like chilling in the evening and then I put my more intense stuff on later in the evening. That was what I wanted to say, but my call was interrupted. Today, I feel, I'm still so happy, but today has been one of those days that I feel like usually I would be really affected by, like nothing has gone right and it's just been a bit of a joke really. But yeah, I'm feeling really good at the moment. Like I spend most of my days like genuinely like this level happy where I'm like, life is good, life is good, life is so good. Like, and it's nice. And my phone did alert me the other day that PMS is coming up. So this, <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's just, actually to be fair, I don't think it is gonna be to do with that. Like I've just felt really, really good now for a really long time. I have not felt that way in so long. I've really, really struggled the past couple of years as we all have. But yeah, I'm feeling really, really good at the moment. I am doing like my 10,000 steps every day. Like I'm gonna say all of these things and I know back when I was like really struggling that I would be rolling my eyes at myself because it's just so hard when you're in a bad mental space to listen to stuff like this. Like I, I love my friends and my friends are very positive people and I've got lots of friends that are like super, super positive and just really like about living their lifestyle in a way that makes them really happy. And I love them so much, but sometimes I just be like, well, yes, yeah, but you're really privileged and you know, blah, blah, blah. Like the amount of times I have joked over the last month. And I still think this, like when we talk about it manifest, and I'm like, is this just a real like capitalist, upper class, middle class concept? You know, when you don't know how you feel about something, you're like, is it, is this possible for it? Like, I just don't feel like, mm. and that sounds a bit weird because I actually have always really believed in stuff like that, but I really, I can see both sides to it, that kind of vibe. I was just really, really naggy about anyone talking about positivity or like manifesting or just even like getting your shit together because I was in such a, dark sad hole and I just couldn't lift I was really struggling to lift myself out of it and I could just feel myself focusing on everything bad that happened in a day focusing on everything negative I never looked good like when I looked at myself in the mirror I was like just always focusing on the things that were wrong with me and I was so so sad and just even throughout like the start of January I was really struggling and I knew that it was something that I needed to get myself out of because I could see, I could really see myself and catch myself doing it. And just recently like a little light bulb went off in my brain and I don't know really how this happened, but I was like, I'm going to do life differently. And it's not even like big, big changes, but it's I'm going to prioritize like getting my steps every day and going like, or going to the gym if it's not nice outside. Cause I like a nature walk and I, I think it's really good for us mentally to be outside. 10,000 steps is just what I want for my lifestyle, but actually there's benefits from like 4,000 steps a day and up. Like I think the mental benefit caps out, I think so I read somewhere at like 7,500 steps. So really anything above that, you're just doing cardio, which is up to you whether you wanna do that. But I've really found that that has helped. I've been super productive at work, which is weird because I've been working less hours, but I have been almost like doing way more because I'm more productive because I am giving myself that time off. And I know everyone's gonna be like, yeah, you get to do that. But actually I would have said that to myself a few months back, I'd have been like, you, you, we, we can't do that. But actually it's just cause I am self-employed. It's a decision I made where I like have a half day on like a Wednesday. And that's like a nice break in the week because actually you've got two days at a time that you're working. And I found that it's really working for me. I do my gratitude journal every morning, which I really struggled with. I bought it last year and thankfully it has just like a 20 on the date slot. So I just write 22 after it. And I really struggled with it last year. I was writing in it all of the things that I like wanted, but like didn't have. And I realized I was focusing on what I, do, I don't have and not being appreciative of all the amazing things that I do have. And when you're in a negative cycle, like it's so hard to focus on the things you do have. Cause you're just like, yeah, well, I don't have that. And actually there's a quote from Oprah, which I also weirdly read in the same week, which was, if you're grateful for what you have, you'll always have more. If you focus on what you don't have, you'll never have enough. Because if you're grateful for what you have, the second anything on top of that comes into your life, you're like, oh yeah, fab. And it's a positive mindset thing, I guess. And then if you're always focusing on the things you don't have, you're never going to, like, that is just a fact, you're never gonna, I don't know. It just really, 
resonated with me and just like came at the right time I guess things just in that one week really went from me being in like a really continually downward spiral to just easing up and then I started to have more time alone because let's face it I'm an introvert and we've been doing that a lot more recently where I have a lot more of my own time I work solo a little bit more where possible my brain is so peaceful and I just have random points in the day where I just walk around smiling and it's bizarre and I don't know. I think I am just tweaking life to work to me a bit better, a little bit more. And I'm catching myself when I'm saying or thinking negative things, like I'm really trying not to say anything negative at the moment. Like I have a lot of people around me that do that and it's cool, it's cool because I think it's just something that, you know, if something does annoy you, you can like say that it's annoyed you, but I'm just really trying at the moment to be like, not false positive like if something is sad that is sad and you i say that but if there's something that is just like hasn't gone right i know i've obviously said it today like nothing is going right but i just kind of at the moment go yeah i can't win them all and i let like, move on and i just don't dwell on it and all of these tiny wee little things combined just like choosing to focus on like things that make me happy and just literally not even giving air time to like negative thoughts has helped so much. It's just, yeah, I've just had a really good run recently and I think a good run combined with making good choices is also really helpful. I've also stopped, I've also stopped drinking. I haven't had a drink. I think I basically did dry January apart from like one gin at a roast and I think maybe that has massively helped. I wasn't a big drinker before. Like I will have like a glass of wine with my dinner. I still like throw rosé in my food all the time when I'm cooking and like white wine in my food when I'm cooking. But I, yeah, I haven't been drinking. I've been eating really well. So like minimal junk food and just lots of like nice whole foods. And I feel like that, and there's a lot of science to back that up, but that has massively helped me. So just these tiny weeny changes, I feel like are doing really, really, really good things for me. I'm starting to think more positively about myself. Like I was always in my head, like the past couple of years, I've never been doing enough or good enough. And now I'm like, nah, I'm enough. Like, I know someone will comment on this video being like, you, you don't work and you're fun employed. And if we want to call me fun employed, then we call me fun employed, that's cool. I, I don't have a real job, fine. I'm enough, I'm doing enough, and I feel really good and at peace with life. I think it also really helps that Ryan and I have a really good game plan for what we are. What is my hair doing? Well, Ryan and I have a really good game plan for what we're doing this year. I think that has definitely helped. I am no longer in limbo and I feel like I always need like a direction of some sort in life. We have a game plan. We know what is happening. I will sit down with you tomorrow and tell you because I have a really long story that I want to tell and that was how I'd always planned it in my head. I literally have been thinking about how I wanted to tell you this makes it sound really serious it's not really serious it's not that exciting but like i've been thinking about like what i wanted to say and how to like tell this particular story for a really long time and i'm running out of daylight so i'll pick this back up tomorrow because i need to be here because my garage door is being fixed which would be lovely because i'll tell you about that tomorrow as well <laughs> nightmare oh and another thing that i wanted to kind of talk about is i've really changed the way i socialize i've really realized some things about myself and i realized that i am much better on a smaller group basis and i get a lot more energy out of it i feel really fulfilled and replenished when i have had those group situations instead of really big group situations also just spending time with the people that make me feel my best it's been a game changer and yeah just managing my life a bit better so that if there is a friend that i want to see but sometimes it's a little bit trickier the relationship is sometimes trickier just tweaking the way in which i see them has helped so much i have it with like family as well where it's like oh i don't really have like all the energy right now or all the this that this relationship kind of requires and then you just tweak the way you see them. it's just great i'm just i feel like i've got a grasp on my life finally i think i finally hit that point at 30 where you're like guess i finally understand how to adult and i really thought when i hit 30 i was like i'm flailing about and i'm really not doing a very good job and this is all just a, a bit of a shit show and i feel like i'm falling apart and i don't feel like that anymore and i realize i've just probably said more than the average words per minute that anyone should physically be able to say but the sun was going down so i needed to get my point across fairly quickly and we're literally in golden hour right now but yeah that is where i'm at feeling good like genuinely genuinely good so me and this one where are you where have you gone there you are. We're gonna pack up our stuff. We're gonna go see dad, your favorite person, because it's not me. Yeah, we're gonna go to Ryan's tonight. He's making, I think some kind of like vegan Chinese, which I'm actually so in the mood for, so up for that. But yeah, I'll take you with me, because I feel like 
you guys really enjoy seeing the food in the vlogs so I'm gonna bring you with me and we'll have a nice evening together My face when he tells me he's making crumpets. <laughs> Actually, I'd like to correct that. Crumpets. I've just got to Ryan's and he's announced he has crumpets on the side because this weekend he's going to make crumpets, which is a, what is it? A French toast crumpet? French toast crumpet. That sounds delish. There's a restaurant locally that actually makes them called Oo, but they're not vegan. Very sad. So chef, what's on the menu tonight? Today we have got Hungry Hurley's famous scarlet chip tofu. Really famous? Yeah. How many views does that reel have now? Too many, I can't even count. <laughs> <laughs> and Linda McCartney's vegan duck. Delish. We went out especially to get me duck pancakes, the vegan ones. You are the dream. Can you edit in a halo here? Ah! By the way guys, there is a recipe for this, like we weren't actually joking, there is a recipe for this on Reels, which is why we call it the famous recipe. So I will link it if you want to know what we're making because the tutorial's already there. We're so like on it this time. obsessed with this blush it looks a state so that's because it's loved don't know if you'll be able to see but i've got it on today just very lightly and i absolutely love it just here yeah. anyway this morning i am off to the house my dad is coming to fix my garage door it broke and we didn't fix it there's a reason we didn't fix it but the foxes have got in and it's it's a nightmare but yeah we will talk more about that in a little bit okay i'm home I've changed for the day. I've got this little knit on from Zara, which I really like. I picked it up when I was getting my nails done the other day. I can't remember if I showed you. And is that in this vlog? Honestly, I can't remember how much I've vlogged recently. And I feel like I started this vlog maybe ages ago. I don't know. I don't know what you're seeing right now. <laughs> I basically started vlogging and then stopped because I wasn't ready to tell you guys everything. So this vlog is just probably going to be really disjointed. So I had this nightmare last night about my hair all broke off again literally my uh, it's one of my worst nightmares it's like a recurring dream that i have some people have their teeth falling out i have my hair falling out slash it being the way it used to where there was like these random chunks of really short bits due to heat styling and bleaching and it all just snapped off so um i have some hair vitamins in my drawer has anyone tried these are they good i'm literally just gonna take them today because i feel really paranoid about my hair breaking off so i would like some more hair growth please but yeah do these things work i actually took some hair gummies back in like 2018 when I went from like again having a long bob to having quite long hair and then I stupidly put extensions in it and then messed it all up but basically I can't tell cause and effect because I used to eat meat and stuff like that back then and I know that protein has an effect on your hair's health and this is one of the reasons why I'm so nervous about my hair at all times and why i sometimes delve back into eating eggs for like brief periods of time because i'm like what if my hair just starts like snapping off and i try to get as much vegan protein into my life as i can like i try and eat all the good things for protein but yeah i do struggle and i know that vitamins are like one of the best ways to really help with that i genuinely don't know what i need to be taking that is okay can someone please advise me because we're about to have a serious chat and it's annoying me and sod law there will be something sticking out that will annoy me even more when we watch this back so i obviously 
spoke a little bit about this at Christmas and the fact that I feel very much in limbo at the moment or I did feel very much in limbo I said a little bit in limbo but there's more of a solid plan of action right now so backstory for those of you that don't know and sorry if you do know and I'm repeating myself Ryan and I own a separate houses he had just bought one literally as we started dating and I have been wanting to buy for years and years and years and years and there was always an obstacle not my obstacle and i was desperate to invest some money even if like i ended up with someone and then like a house got rented out like i was like that's just not a bad position to be in yes i could move in with a new partner and just like sit on some money but that's having money but it's not building wealth if that makes sense it's not like building on your money you're just leaving it to sit and depreciate i'd already been doing that for such a long time like if i'd have just bought a flat to rent out that i didn't even want to live in when my accountant first told me that i could do that i would be in a much stronger financial position now so my advice to anyone out there that's younger than me is don't wait for people i know everyone has their opinions on that and it's really tricky to actually put into practice but yeah it's just um one of those things like if i could change something i would change that but anyway so i was desperate to invest my money into a property yes i could have invested into other things but i really i just wanted to buy a house and you know when you start dating someone you just don't really know that that's going to end up being really serious so it was just something to me that was super important so we both owned a house separately and pre-covid we always kind of thought like we'll in a couple of years kind of revisit where we're at and in a couple of years we'll buy together and then covid hit and i had always been quite like money a little bit money anxious but covid almost like solidified my money anxieties which is slightly ludicrous because i work in a very lucrative industry so i have these kind of like money anxieties and i guess i've always been quite risky with my jobs this is going off on a long tangent but i've always been very, very risky with my jobs i give up permanent safe jobs for like temporary jobs because i felt like they were good career builders i don't advise everyone does that but that, those are my personal choices and they really paid off for me so i always had to have like something to fall back on like a little bit of money to fall back on because i was always doing that even when i went from like my permanent job in events and then I started doing this full time I was like <laughs> well we need to have some savings so COVID almost solidified that that worry that I had that was just a what if worry that was quite small and I problem solved it by having this coping strategy of like having a little bit of savings it made that worry more real and more solid and it was very all-consuming like I wasn't mentally okay during like i know covid and the pandemic is still going on but things in the uk are they're not normal by any sense but things are changing and life is becoming way more manageable like mentally for me like i'm in a much better place now but up until recently the past like just under two years i was not okay and that was one of the things like my brain was almost listening to my anxieties more because that one worry that everyone had told me would never happen and it wasn't happening but it was just the thing in the a niggle in the back of my mind became like a full all consuming thing and then on top of that i bought property and i had this mortgage and i was like actually do you know what i really don't get mortgages like i don't feel like i understand them as well as i should again just another thing that my brain is like being really critical of and telling me that i don't understand but actually i have a good grasp on it but just one of those things where especially with the brain the way my brain works it's quite an active brain it really latched on to mortgages finances blah blah, blah. and i started to really worry about the future and what we were going to do and we were originally as you guys will know talking about doing various bits to the house last year and then brexit happened and the cost of timber like so if you don't know you need timber to like do loft conversions went like this and I was like I now can't afford to do that to my house I can't afford that and at that point it actually made more sense because of the value of my house had risen for me and Ryan like if we wanted to live together because backstory this is another thing we've been talking the whole time about how the hell are we going to end up living together like how are we going to make this work and one of our options was going to be if i couldn't afford to do my renovations cost here was going to be to sell this house and move further so the cost of where we were buying would be less but we could maybe get a bit more space and that was what up until a few weeks ago a few weeks ago basically we've like very recently decided and this is like 
we've made our decision up until a few weeks ago we were moving and that was why i was like i've got stuff to tell you guys next year but i don't know when i'm going to be able to tell you because it could be like I couldn't have told you until the summer because actually it might have taken quite a long time to get everything sorted. And I honestly don't know how I would have kept that secret because that's a really big thing to hide. And we were talking to estate agents about like how that would work and you know, it's very, very difficult, like keeping something that big on the, on the down low. So we have been back and forth over what to do for a long time, but now more recently things have changed and Ryan is going to help me do the loft conversion. So our loft conversion is back on. It's not happening in 2022 as I'd originally hoped because I would have been planning that in last year to do this year. However, it is now in the works. So we will kind of update you on bits as and when we can. I've done the whole architect bit all of that but it's not going to be like a jump to it kind of thing but in the meantime we're also converting the garage into an office not for me for ryan lots of you know he works in music so we've got that sound element where we need to be kind of like away from each other but we want to be together but we want to work slightly separately so that we're not interfering with each other like how annoying would it be right now if perhaps music started playing whilst i was talking to you guys and on top of that, we really wanted space to, like lots of you would be like, why are you bothering with the loft conversion if you have an office and then he's gonna have an office in the garden, but we wanted a space to grow into together. So that is why we are doing the loft conversion. Also, the room that we are hopefully gonna turn into a staircase is the most dark, dingy little room. And I'm like, that deserves to be a staircase. Stick a Velux above it or something. Bring more light in. It will be gorgeous. You can make a utility area. It's gonna be amazing. It's also going to make me penniless because the garage is enough, <laughs> let alone a big project like a loft. And basically the reason that we are so happy that we can make this option work is because I love YouTube culture. I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm a YouTuber. I love watching YouTubers, but I really was hesitant to as much as having like a big lovely home further out is i really didn't want to keep upping my lifestyle anymore i just want to be able to be comfortable and i feel like this needs to be said because i know love youtube culture and bloggers like just like i do and i can almost see within our generation everyone wants like the next biggest thing and everything to be like big and lovely and one day you know we'll have this big house and this and that would be lovely and if ryan and i ever have that later in our life that would be wonderful but at this stage in our life i really want to make sure we're making good financial sensible decisions for our future and i really was hesitant to move further out and potentially like i could i didn't buy get the biggest mortgage with this house i again money anxieties i didn't stretch myself as far as i could i was hesitant to stretch it more because you're just upping your and i understand like you're paying off a house so it is an investment and it's great but it's upping my lifestyle again for another like five plus years and actually i've got some other friends and i watched the financial moves that they make you know paying off their mortgage to begin with and then reducing it but overpaying and i was like you know what that makes so much more sense to me like keeping things comfortable and not pushing for the biggest fanciest house but just being able to grow and bloom right where we are and that's what staying here really allows us to do so this is the point i get really awkward too because i actually as much as i i talk about money so much in real life i get so awkward on youtube because i'm very aware that i am so privileged and that's why when people ask for money advice i don't give it because i just think i obviously have had a normal job a normal career but i wasn't doing it in today's economy and you know there are things that i didn't do i would I, I would never say that i've really made mistakes because i i haven't i just haven't I haven't been the smartest with my money but i haven't ever really i wouldn't say made a money mistake i've just always had enough and i didn't have any like debt or student loan or anything like that just always very sensible and always like had savings from like quite a young age to be honest so i was very privileged in that sense and that's why i don't really talk about money and i don't like to talk about money but just in this sense of like the decision that ryan and i have made and why we've made it i feel like there's almost a slight responsibility to say it because there are there's so many lifestyles that you see on the internet right now and it's like i bought this 10 million pound house and i'm 21 i don't know something like that something really over the top but like you see everyone upping their lifestyle in accordance with the fact that their earnings have maybe upped and some people are just good with money and fair play but i just don't feel like you ever really hear someone say actually we've decided to not do that 
I don't know. And we are also so happy because my, I don't know how this ended up this way, it's really strange, but my area that I picked to live in, it is very, very close to some of our closest like friends and family and it just feels very nice and it's close to like everything you could possibly need. The countryside, the sea, public transport. We don't have direct neighbors that we can annoy. Great parking, great garden, like this, house is great and we're really excited to be taking it a little bit further and can hopefully continue to make it great but also at the same time like whilst it might be a little bit tight with savings and like you know we're going to be hemorrhaging money for the next kind of couple of years we hope that in 10 years time we'll be a lot more comfortable having done things this way than having upped our outgoings but yeah we are so excited we are so fortunate that we are able to do the lock conversion because otherwise we would kind of be sitting on top of each other a little bit in terms of like space and what we are doing with our various properties just leaves us as people that work in very unstable industries during hello do you want to come up here? During very uncertain times, it just, it makes sense. I'm not a big risk taker and I really felt like upping our outgoings in order to get that big family home felt like a little bit too risky. And the one thing that I don't ever want, everyone always says to me, and I, I'm actually, I need to say this because this is what everyone says to me in real life. And I know everyone in the comments will also say it, is why don't you just sell both houses and buy a big one together? And my Number one fear is having financial difficulty, which is enough of a kick in the crotch as it is, and then having to uproot a family because we are having fun. And I know it happens, I know it happens. And it's so normal and no shame on anyone that has to be in that situation, but we are fortunate enough to not have to be in that situation so why would we put ourselves in that situation if that makes sense so yes it would allow us to have a really really big house if we sold both and then like moved out like my brother and his girlfriend are buying a house up north i'm so excited because i very rarely go up north and i've been up there like a handful of times i'm very excited to visit you that's to everyone who lives up north i'm so excited yeah we look at what we could do if we just sold one of our houses and moved to where they're moving it would be amazing it would be so incredible like i can't even tell you they send me things sometimes based on our like spec and i've had to ask them to stop because it's just it's too much living down south is the ultimate scam if you are self-employed and you don't need to live down south but we want to stay for our family yeah that was something i wanted to say was like we're not going to do that because my number one fear is two people that don't have stable incomes and actually having a separate property that if times get tough, we can rely on and fall back on is goals. So that is why we're not doing that. But yeah, that's where we're at. I'm so excited to bring you guys along on this journey. It's not gonna be quick by any means. Like I definitely need to wait a couple of months just to have some more things like checked and like finalized and then we can start on the garage. And then I'm hoping for loft conversion in 2023, fingers crossed. And that is going to be so fun because fingers crossed, one of those rooms is going to become my walk-in wardrobe, like fully kitted out. Carla Webster, if you're watching this, the time has come. For those of you who don't know, my friend Carla does wardrobe, works well, as a personal stylist, but she designs bespoke wardrobes and she is the best. But yeah, that is where we're at. I've talked for so long that my bun has dropped. Now I just look a bit disheveled. But yeah, that is where we're at. If anyone has any tips, for garage conversions, loft conversions. I found one company who are very promising, but the quote made me need to sit down a little bit, which is fine because I want things to be done well. But yeah, if you have any recommendations, please let me know. I would love to hear. You can either pop them in the comments, DM me on my home account, DM me on my main account. The main account, I can't always reply to everyone because there's so many, but if you get me on the home account, sometimes I can get back. Yeah, hopefully it either helps some of you that are in a similar position and you're not sure what to do, or it's just relatable for some of you if you're doing loft conversions. You're like, the cost of timber is insane. And if not, nothing else, I hope you enjoy a little insight into what has been going on in life over the past year because I really haven't talked about it because I genuinely wasn't sure what we were doing. It's sad sometimes because I would just love to tell you guys every step of the way and take you along, but there are always people that spoil it. So I do kind of have to tell you in hindsight sometimes, which is a bit annoying, but great because we get to like sit and have this long 30 minute chat. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go now and get on with my day. I'll be back.
wait this one but oh well okay we are in the bathroom i'm gonna do my hair mask i've just realized i've sat you on my hair mask that was really not clever was it i'm just gonna stand on my tiptoes this is fine this is the hair mask i'm gonna use it's by Kerastas. i love it their new range is very good it's for like any kind of damaged colored hair so it doesn't have to cater towards blonde hair really love it spoken about it before i'm pretty sure i love the gloss as well where is the gloss where is the gloss Ah, by the way, so sorry, this is probably going to be like an hour-long special vlog. This is so good. You literally just like... I've got a tutorial coming up because I'm working with them because we have a mutual deep love. I am obsessed with this and also the packaging. How fun is that? Uh, this is probably the best I've ever got it to look on camera. It's like a full rainbow. So yeah, I love that. You just put it on for two minutes on your hair and it makes it look really shiny. But for the overall hair health, I'm using this at the moment. I have a few different Kerastase hair masks. They're all great and i found that they've all really helped my hair like obviously as i was saying one of my big fears is my hair falling out and like breaking off and it hasn't i have continued obviously i did wear it in a bun for like four months <laughs> this year uh last year but i obviously had it cut into the bob and i used my kerastase products from like the day or like i started using it like a week before i think i had my hair cut but like from like the instant my hair was cut i was using kerastase products i was using the blonde absolute seeker extreme or blonde absolute and then i started using seeker extreme because my hair was very very blonde at that point on the ends and i found it helped so much my hair had never looked so healthy even though like i'd had the bob cut in i still had a lot of damage on the ends and that could have continued to break and i do think that these products helped massively because i was just using whatever before but yeah i really think their products have massively helped my hair. I've been using Kerastase for years, but this is the first like big block of time where I've really used them exclusively. Wow. Okay, so I always have a spray bottle that literally just has water in it because I know you're meant to do a hair mask on dry hair. However, I find the product just distributes a little bit easier if my hair is damp, so I dampen it. I don't like make it super, super wet. And then it dries pretty quickly anyway, and the product does the usual. Oh, I need to put my brace back in. I've got to update you on my Invisalign appointment yesterday, but it was a checkup. It was meant to be my final. We're not quite there. And I'm really glad that Nick, my dentist, I'll leave like details down below if anyone's interested because I get DMs from you guys. But I'm really glad that he felt the same as well. Like he was like, no, I'm not quite there. I'm going to do a couple more trays because I was like, oh, I think this one could just come forward a tiny bit more. But they look really good and he's going to bring it down a bit more as well which is so good because it's always just sat a little bit higher up and it's always bugged me so i'm on tray eight now for another couple of weeks and he's going to make me a bottom one as well because i've still got my old retainer on the bottom and it's a nightmare also i think i'm addicted to selling things on depop <laughs> i'm going to be one of those people you read about in a tabloid newspaper that's like i sold my entire life on depop even my depop assistant is like can you like so this is my job <laughs> i'm like just on there like replying to loads of you and listing things it's just oh, i'm having so much fun doing it also just really hell-bent on making space in this house for ryan because <laughs> i can finally tell you guys about it it's so fun oh another thing that we need to work on is i need to have some carpentry done in the bedroom because i need wardrobes in there i'm thinking the same kind of layout as my when i lived in a house previously that the bedroom looks exactly like the one I have now. I'm thinking the wardrobe's in the same place, so if you know, you know. Basically, the long stretch of wall when you come in should be perfect for a big, like his and hers wardrobe. Another thing to add to my house spreadsheet. Yeah, so I I am aware about I need to make space for him, and I think that's probably really helping it as well because like the goal of him moving in is the motivator. <laughs> I'm going to be able to brush this out. There's no way this is going to look good in a ponytail. I should have brushed my hair before. Guys, upon inspection, the garage is even worse than we thought. The foxes have not only like ransacked the place, like imagine, like there are all these bags of clothes that never got taken to, you know, where they recycle clothes. And we were like, it's fine, it's fine, we'll deal with that later. They're fine in there, they're in these big, thick vacuum seal bags, it's fine. They've ripped through them, so it's all ransacked, they've chewed through it, my clothes are in shreds, it's fine, that's fine, we knew that. They have, and this is a recent, this is, this is why I know it's happened recently they have chewed through my lawnmower cable in like into a hundred thousand little pieces the same with my shrimmer 
There's a bad smell because there's stuff everywhere. If you know what I'm saying. My dad's just like laughing at me because I'm looking, I'm standing there like, I'm going to cry. Like I'm going to, it's fine. It's all fine. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sort that out on Tuesday. That's Tuesday's problem. <laughs> but what a joke. Anyway, I'm off to Ryan's now to have a curry and uh, try not to think about the state of my carriage. Right, so I had all of my bags. We're on deep now, so. If you want to grab yourself a bargain go over there because i've literally like reduced half the prices of things and i'm just like just get this out of my house please we are starting to make a curry what is this one today chef it's going to be a vegan core oh with nice sounds delish come on here and end this vlog i actually had something else that i wanted to tell you a little kind of like tip on how i have adapted my schedule recently however I just watched this vlog through and it is good morning where are you i can hear you but i can't see you but this video is so long already so i'm actually gonna save it for the next video which i am literally about to start so i'll try and get into it as quickly as i can in the next video but yeah there's a real like scheduling let's call it a scheduling hack i don't really know what else to call it the way that i make decisions on what goes in my schedule very very quickly and it does sound borderline insane when i first say it so i do need time to like talk it through with you but i found it to be really really effective so far especially if you're an introvert so i'm gonna leave you here i hope you guys have enjoyed this very very long video we covered a lot of stuff in this one i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys again very very soon i believe on thursday love you bye <laughs>